In the remote valleys of South America, a revolution is underway. Below the Andes mountain range, a new generation of winemakers are redefining an industry. They're challenging the dominance of the established old world producers, competing for the palates of wine lovers around the world. New investments in technology are allowing them to explore the potential of cooler microclimates. Vineyard sites are emerging high in the hills and in cool valleys close to the sea. These are wines of finesse and elegance, grown in the region known as the winemaker's paradise, Chile. Chile is one of the fastest wine-growing regions of the world. The country is a mosaic of flavors and styles, as varied as the geography, the climate, and the people themselves. This country is much like an island, cut off from the rest of the world and dependent on trade for survival. Shipping ports are the link to markets across the globe. From here, Chile shares its bounty with the world. You don't see a great number of tourists from North America here. I think it's one reason why this country remains such a mystery to Canadians. Its isolation from the world has kept much of its rich culture hidden from view. Santiago, the sprawling capital city, is home to many of Chile's 16 million inhabitants. Today, the country is a stable democracy with a strong economy and one of the most educated societies in South America. This is Santiago's central market area where you'll find an abundance of fresh produce on display. High quality fruit is grown here because the climate provides ideal growing conditions. Chile is known as the winemaker's paradise, one of the best places to grow grapes in the world. The French saw its potential more than 100 years ago and helped cultivate Chile's vineyards with the classic Bordeaux varieties. Riding along the vineyard trails, you get a real sense of the land and its incredible potential. These isolated vineyards have been protected for centuries by mountain and desert. Chile is home to some of the oldest grapevines in the world. This is spectacular. That's the only way to describe this. It's beautiful, isn't it? Hernan Gra made wine in Ontario for 20 years, but returned because he recognized the potential in Chile's vineyards. The weather and the conditions to grow grapes here are so good that you almost can guarantee uh, anybody around the world that we're going to obtain the best wine year after year and the consistency that you be hard pressed to find any, anywhere in the world. So trust the Chilean wine because it's always going to be high quality. The sunny climate here is ideal for quality fruit production and is moderated by air flowing down from the Andes and in from the cool Pacific Ocean. This airflow creates temperature variations that can range from 30 degrees Celsius during the day down to 10 degrees at night. This slows the ripening process, allowing the grapes to develop complexities through improved acid balance, tannins, and flavor compounds. Breeze from the ocean that uh, cooled down the temperature during the day and night. And this big difference of temperature allow us to ripe the fruit very long. From flower to the picking, we can ripe the tannins, which is very important to achieve a good wine. In the past 20 years ago, we always have a really good weather vintages, and the variation in between one year and the other one is not really high. We're talking a really small variation, and that's helped us to, to really have consistent vintages. 
We have ideal conditions from sanitary conditions, having no pests, no diseases, no rainfall, which is the main risk that you have when you're approaching uh, harvest time. So it really makes it an ideal valley, and I think that's the quality of our wines. This region provides growers with one more distinct advantage, organic production. Due to its isolation and dry climate, Chile is free from many of the pests, fungus, and diseases that afflict other growing regions of the world. They don't rely heavily on pesticides or herbicides to produce healthy fruit. Beyond the vineyards, the landscape of the country is incredibly diverse. It stretches almost 4,300 kilometers along the Pacific coast through varied and magnificent landscapes. The arid Atacama Desert is in the north, with the capital Santiago in the center of the country and the glaciers and fjords of Patagonia to the south. On average, Chile is less than 200 kilometers wide. The Maipo Valley, close to Santiago, was traditionally the home of wine production here. But in recent years, vineyards have spread to marginal areas, developing new regions. 10, 15 years, we have been looking for different areas, not the traditional ones, to find special terroirs. No? Normally, we are going a little bit to the extremes. Could be, for example, going nearer to the coast. With these extremes, you can achieve different conditions. Maybe you can have different styles, special things. Chile has a lot of mountains. For this, we have a lot of mesoclimates. And into the mesoclimates, we have a lot of different kind of soil. And the quality of the wine depends where are you. In Chile, we have all the French variety, but the style of the wine is the style of the land. La gente se está dando cuenta que cada región y cada suelo tiene su, sus variedades preferidas. Es una evolución también. También de conocer más las variedades, de conocer más el suelo. Few know that Chile is the oldest wine producing country in the New World with almost 500 years of tradition. However, the evolution in quality production was slower to develop here than other New World regions. By the 1990s, no longer content with a reputation for value wines, the industry shifted its focus to quality. With over a billion dollars in new investment, massive replanting, and development of new regions, Chile was ready to take on the global market. But was the world ready? One producer took extraordinary steps to prove that Chile's wines could rival the best. In the old days, uh, the French argued that they had the terroir, and they, and it, it, it somehow the historical wines were French and Italian and European. But the New World has equally excellent conditions to produce world-class wines. Unsatisfied with the global perception of Chile's wines, Chadwick gambled the industry's reputation in the historic 2004 Berlin tasting. Repeated in Brazil, Tokyo, and here in Toronto in 2006, a jury of top wine writers and buyers placed Chilean wines ahead of some of the best labels from Bordeaux and Tuscany in blind evaluations. The experts were stunned. Thank you very much. I think the result was shocking to the judges because they didn't expect Chile to perform at that level. Because here we're really talking about the best, the first growth of Bordeaux, the super Tuscans of Italy, and the very best vintage. So to come first and second on top of the best of the world was very surprising. And also, our wines cost around $100. The same wines that we are comparing ourselves to, we need to pay 700 euros. Chile was finally gaining respect internationally, being recognized as a region that delivered quality and complexity at every price level. Established producer Mario Pablo Silva knows what brought that change about. The mind of the people in Chile, of the producer, is thinking in quality, not in quantity. We start planting on the foothill of the Andes mountain and also very close to the Pacific. This, this has been a very big change in Chile. Chile was on the rise, 
For years it had been known for its good value Cabernet Sauvignon, but now the labels were changing. New grape varieties were shipping to the world. Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Syrah, and Chile's signature grape, Carmenere, were getting international attention. Finally, you know that we are in a country that have a great potential for producing diversity of wine, good wines and good price wine also. ¿Por qué en Chile cambió? Encima. Porque se dieron cuenta que hay un potencial. En Chile hay un gran potencial para hacer grandes vinos que tiene que explotarse, que tiene que mejorarse y que tiene que conocerse y hacerse. In the sophisticated urban centers of Chile, there's a new appreciation for the country's fine wines. Here in one of Santiago's top wine boutiques, master sommelier Hector Vergara shares his passion for his country's wines. No, there is a whole new generation of winemakers is making the big change in Chilean wines. The wines more and more are reflecting the place from where they come from. This one is a hillside vineyard planted on the slope. The big changes that I notice in Chilean wines, the improvement in quality. I mean, when you go to the countryside, you visit the vineyards. Now you see the application, the investment that has been put into it. Across town at Santiago's Ritz-Carlton, sommelier Magda Saleh Jacobo oversees an extensive cellar featuring 365 of Chile's best vintages. Sauvignon Blanc de Garza Silva. We have the largest wine list in South America. Our customer, they come here and they want to know about Chilean wines. Buenas tardes, ¿cómo están? It's amazing because the good condition of weather to produce the perfect wine, we do have a very good result and we are very proud and the people really love it. It's Chilean. <laughs> Beyond the city, the traditional lifestyle lives on. In the vineyards of Casa Silva, the Huasos perfect their skills. These horsemen embody the spirit that has propelled the wine industry to new heights. A bit different from your Canadian. It's much, <laughs> much different than Rodeo at home. Dominic Harmsworth is the export manager here and has witnessed the dramatic changes firsthand. I think Chile has got a bit of a spring in its step at the moment. We as a country in the old days offered pretty much a lot of the same and now you're seeing new valleys being discovered, exciting regions with new varieties. I think Chile has now got something pretty healthy to shout about. We're measuring everything that we can above and below ground and this is all with a view to properly understanding our micro terroir which is an overused word but I think here we can apply it correctly.